our Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau. Thank you, Adam, for, uh, for your kind words and for everything you do. Obviously, it's, uh, uh, it's not an easy, easy life, but you know what it is to uh, work incredibly hard towards a goal and the energy that you bring every day uh, to gathering up great people, to uh, pushing our country forward in really meaningful ways is, is deeply, deeply important. So thank you for everything you do. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Um, all of you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Eid Mubarak. Uh, you know, it is, uh, thank you for choosing to be here tonight. I was at a, a, an Eid celebration a little earlier this afternoon having uh, wonderful conversations and uh, you know, continuing to do uh, the work that is so important in, in this country for all of us to do, which is uh, figure out how to bring people together in a difficult time. Because that's really uh, what we're facing as a challenge. Because these are difficult times whether it's climate change, whether it's continued hangovers from the pandemic, uh, whether it's dealing with you know, economic slowdowns around the world, uh, dealing with geopolitics that are shifting to include a war in Ukraine, uh, there are a lot of reasons to people, for people to be really anxious uh, about where they are and mostly about their future and about their kids' futures. And in times of anxiety, it's easy uh, for people to exaggerate and amplify those fears, reflect those fears back to them. And we see it all around the world in politics of negativity, politics of amplification of fears, uh, of division, of toxicity even, that, that grab hold, that reflect back the anger and the frustrations and the fear that people feel. But as we all know, that's not a way to actually solve those challenges. What we got elected on in 2015 as a team uh, was, and supported by so many of you uh, seven and a half years ago, was a commitment to try and solve some of the really big challenges we were facing. Whether it was reconciliation, whether it was you know, getting Canada actually engaged on the path to fight climate change and getting our emissions to come down, whether it is looking out at the hollowing of the middle class that we've seen across democracies uh, over the past decade and a half, particularly though since the 2008 financial crisis, where people are realizing or worried that the very idea of progress that had you know, fed the American dream, the Canadian dream, this idea that the hard work of one generation would leave the next generation better off with better opportunities than the previous one, people are suddenly feeling like maybe that doesn't hold anymore. And we didn't even have nearly the kinds of anxieties that we're living through now with Ukraine, with wildfires, with, uh, with the rise of Russia and China in very challenging ways, with the echoes of the pandemic. But still, there was a real anxiety that people were feeling in 2015 about where the world was going and where Canada was going. For those of you who remember, after 10 years of Harper, there was a fair bit of gloom uh, about the kinds of decisions and direction this country was going in. So we got elected to try and change the direction of this country for the better. Get us on a track that was more aligned with who Canadians are. Open-minded, open-hearted, hardworking, diverse, ready to work hard for that success, but ready to be there for your neighbors at the same time. Understanding that we are luckier in this country than 99.5% of the planet's population just because we happen to be here in Canada, and that that comes with a responsibility to try and create solutions that might help the rest of the world move along in the right directions too. So we rolled up our sleeves and we dug in on reconciliation and we have actually seen hundreds and hundreds of schools open up on reserves. We've eliminated about 130 long-term boil water advisories and in the 30 or so that have left, every single one of them has a plan and a project leader and the funding necessary to end it. We're moving forward. Yeah. We're moving forward on resolving long-standing treaties and claims that are, are not just setting us on the right path to fix the wrongs of the past, but to shape the future as partners at a time where we are needing to start thinking differently about the kind of short-term thinking that has not led our planet to the best places, particularly around the environment. So leaning in on reconciliation has led to big things. On the environment, we're the country with the third largest proven oil reserves in the world. 
a massive part of our export markets, of our GB GDP, of our uh, work, relied on the fossil fuel industry. And it still does, and it will for a number of years. But because we made the decision and recognized that the world is going in a different direction, and we could either be dragged kicking and screaming into it without having any of the opportunities come with it, or we can actually lead on it, we put a price on pollution. We moved forward in ways that are investing in clean energy, in clean tech, in innovation that's bringing us in the right direction. And I remember seven and a half years ago, I had to say to a whole bunch of people, yes, climate change is a challenge that we absolutely have to meet, but it also is going to be an opportunity for jobs and growth and investment. Trust me on that. And of course, we didn't have anything to show for that seven and a half years ago. But now what we see is the world is looking at Canada as one of those steady bets on investments. Whether it's Stellantis, whether it's Volkswagen, whether it's Rio Tinto, whether it's uh, companies settling across the, uh, in across the world that look at our clean energy, our cleaner future, our hydrogen, our wind power, the opportunities that we're innovating and developing, and also Canadians themselves as forward-thinking, ambitious, optimistic, hardworking, I mean, the number one selling point to any company I talk to around the world on where Canada is and what we're ready to offer them is Canadians themselves. At a time uh, where there is so, so much uncertainty about labor crises around the world, Canada is the fastest growing country in the G7 because of immigration. People are looking at that saying, this is the place to invest to ensure the workforce of the future that will be there, that will be committed, and yes, those social programs that the conservatives are always railing against, things like childcare or voting against, like dental benefits for low, income, low and middle income Canadians who don't have it, those are not just social programs, those are economic programs because it gives us that competitive advantage uh, when a company like Volkswagen comes to set up in St. Thomas, they know that their employees there are going to keep showing up, are going to keep building, are invested in the future for the long term. These are the things that we've been doing that, yes, have taken a, a time to settle, but they're doing it. Canada has the lowest debt, uh, lowest deficit in the G7, lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, second lowest inflation behind only Japan with our not down to 3.4 percent. It's going to continue going down. At the same time, as our economic growth is second only to the U.S., Looks like we might be competing with them by the time 25 comes around for economic growth as well, because we are on the right track. And we've done it by staying positive and staying focused on solving the big challenges ahead of us. People are looking for quick answers and quick fixes and wanting to be reassured right now, and I get that. And when the crises hit, people are likely to try and hide under rocks and just say, okay, let's let the storm pass by. But that's not how we meet this moment. That's not how Canadians have gotten through challenges and crises in the past. And I was talking to a group of mayors a few weeks ago here in Toronto at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And one of them, a mayor from a more rural part of the prairies, uh, said to me, yes, and I'm, we're not going to agree on partisanship, but we're going to agree on, on how we work together. I said, actually, the new partisanship isn't left versus right anymore. Because there's a heck of a lot we have more in common as you, a more right-leaning mayor, and me as a progressive prime minister, because we believe in providing solutions and services to our citizens. The new division in politics is between people who want to get people angry and riled up versus people who actually want to build and serve and solve problems. And that's why I've been able to work across, across party lines. That's why you know, the conversations I had last week with Brian Mulroney when he was so uh, incredibly uh, positive about the kinds of things that we've been doing through very, very difficult times, including renegotiating NAFTA at a time where our economy was in the balance uh, and we suffer horribly if uh, President Trump had, agreed, had been able to rip it up. We're facing really serious challenges, and it takes responsible, serious leadership. And that's what we've been focused on. And then on the other side of the aisle, 
We have a, a, a party, and particularly a conservative party leader, that has understood that, yeah, people are anxious. People are worried about the future. And echoing back that anger is a way of connecting with people who are angry. And amplifying it is a way of looking like, yeah, you really get it, and you're motivating them to, to mobilize. But it's not a way we built this country through generations and centuries. It's not the way we tackle and solve challenges we're facing. And when you match that with the challenges of social media, disinformation, misinformation, when you match that with the challenge of foreign interference that is trying to undermine our democracies, when you match that with a general uncertainty about where the world is going, no wonder people are worried. It can be instrumentalized to win elections. You just can't then govern and build a country in any responsible way. And that's what we've been committed to as liberals for seven and a half years. And that's why I'm continuing to believe so deeply in the path that we're on and the team that we continue to build every single day. And that's why I'm so incredibly grateful for all of you coming out tonight on a Wednesday night in the middle of the week when I know you all have other things that you could be doing, particularly the Muslim community. Thank you very much for choosing to come here. Uh, but to be able to come out and say, no, no, you want to be part of building a stronger future. You want to make sure that people are tackling the tough questions and not just avoiding them. We want to make sure that people are building towards the kinds of answers we need as a country. Not because I have all the answers, not because we have all the answers, because we are serious about building those answers in partnership with Canadians from coast to coast to coast. This is the path we're on, and quite frankly, as I travel around the world and talk to leaders about the challenges they're facing, the challenges we're facing, they look at Canada and say, wait, your population's growing, your inflation's already almost down to 3% and going lower. You've got trade deals with two-thirds of the global economy, the only G7 economy with a free trade deal with every other G7 economy. Wait, you've got all the critical minerals and the resources and the energy and the net zero energy and renewable energy that the world needs right now, and you're developing quantum computing and AI. Well, AI, yeah, we are doing that. Uh, even as it's scaring us all, Canada's <laughs> leading on the ethical AI conversations as well. And we've got a world-leading battery industry that we've built from scratch over the past few years. We went from sixth in the world on battery supply chains the second in the world behind only China just in the past few years because of hard work that this government has done with partners across the country. We are well positioned and we have a growing population at a time where everyone's worried about labor shortages because we're open to immigration. We are facing challenges and one of the really big ones is we got to get more housing built in this country. There's no question about it. It's a supply challenge more than just about anything else. And that's why we put out $4 billion uh, for municipalities to accelerate their zoning and their densification projects, to rapid fast track some permitting, to make sure that we're unlocking the potential to build far more housing in this country. Uh, and that's something we absolutely have to do. Because the alternative is having to slow down on immigration at a time where Canadians want more immigration, and with good reason, where we get to have more growth and more world-leading um, economic numbers that because of the decisions we've taken that have led to millions of people lifted out of poverty, including 600,000 kids, the decisions we've taken uh, to bend the curve and actually see emissions go down for the first time ever uh, as we continue to grow, which means we've decoupled emissions from economic growth, which is a huge challenge for an oil-producing country like Canada. We're going to continue to be on this right track, but we're going to have to stay steady. We're going to have to stay strong. We're going to have to stay connected with Canadians. And you being here tonight from an extraordinary diverse and diversified communities like, uh, like uh, Adam pointed out, to say you want to be part of it. You want to make sure we're getting that message out and we're reaching out to people like Dave Hildersley in Oxford who stepped up for us and really showed Pierre Pauly of a bad night a week ago in that by-election. 
because people want to be positive. People want to know we're going to tackle these challenges and stay optimistic and positive about the kind of world we're building and Canada's essential role in that world. So I'm excited about the coming years and I'm excited that all of you chose to come out tonight to be part of it. I thank you deeply. Je vous remercie profondément pour toute votre implication et votre engagement d'être ici ce soir. Mais il nous reste beaucoup de travail à faire et on va le faire ensemble. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thank you all so much. I don't think it's how is that fair that I'm following Prime Minister anyway. So let's hear one more time for Prime Minister.